Carlin Motorsports as well. Hi, Max. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. We're on a bit of a media tour around Detroit, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. We love talking to you guys, man. It's so much fun. And um, last night you were here in Detroit for the Red Wings game. Look good. You're a you're, you're good luck charm now. You have to stay. Yeah, we uh, they had a cracking game. They won 4-1 last night. It was uh, my first ever ice hockey game. Um, I used to play field hockey in the UK, but never never ice. So uh, it's, it's quite similar to IndyCar. It's fast and aggressive. Um, and that stadium is, uh, you know, C- Little Caesars uh, Arena is really, really impressive. It's so steep. We went up to like a radio booth right at the top and it was like a bird's eye view. You're hanging like so over high. the ice, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah we're, we're really, really proud of that down there. Um, we also have talk about your racing last night, uh, the uh, the hand braking here for the pedal cars. You get a little intense there last night, Max? Yeah, we had a little Chevrolet pedal, pedal race. Uh, basically, there was three teams and there was... Uh, random people selected from the audience i was paired up with this guy who luckily um i asked him i said i had a selection to pick from and i said well, who's good at cycling one guy said oh i'm an ex-bmx rider so i was like yeah <laughs> shotgun so he did the first lap gave us a good comfortable lead and i just had to cruise home to the finish line had enough time to showboat and do a finish finish uh, handbrake turn which you got to do it, it, again but that's in your nature that so makes you such a great driver are you is this competitive with everything uh, at the end of the day Likes losing. It's not. A... Either way. I I was going to ask that too, and I know you and our time before we came on, and um, uh, the F1 series it's on Netflix now, and you haven't seen it, but there's one thing I wanted to touch on because I thought it was really interesting, and a lot of it is produced, obviously, you know, to make drama out of it, you know, a little maybe over, but when they talk about a driver's confidence, and they show Roman Grosjean last year driving for Haas and some of the issues he had that were out of his control or some a mental bobble that he made and he openly admitted that he was having confidence issues driven and I've seen the way you are just like you were last night you have to have that edge don't you yeah if you're not if you're not um confident in yourself you're never going to achieve anything um motorsport's hard though it's very easy to knock your confidence if you make one mistake you, or you crash you then constantly think oh I can't do that again and you're instantly on the back foot so you've got to be confident but that's sport and life in general if you're not confident you're not going to you're not going to get anywhere so you've got to believe in your ability be well prepared and uh, get yourself back on the on top top step and I think one of the, the the interesting things and I know we've talked about a lot one of the the, the best things about watching IndyCar is the fact that there are no back markers there no. you from front to back everybody has a legitimate shot and you guys push each other so hard every race that you see it when you're watching it on TV or in person at the Detroit Grand Prix. Absolutely. Coming from Formula One where everyone's got different um, cars pretty much, you're racing your teammate and maybe one other team, uh, to come into IndyCar where you are racing 24 other drivers. At Indy, you're racing 30, 30 other drivers or 32 other drivers. Um, that's why it's fantastic. And you wouldn't bet on an IndyCar race because one day someone might win in the next race. They can qualify dead last. Um, so... You know, look at James Hinchcliffe. He, he got pole uh, at Indy, and then a year later, he didn't even qualify. For right. And uh, it's, they, they just put on a fantastic show. And uh, luckily, being in Detroit, where we have a double header, it's the only double header of the season. Fans get to get the luxury of watching two qualifyings and two whole races full size full length races in 24 hour periods so it's a uh, it's a pretty great race at detroit and it's our 30th year back oh it's going to be great there's so many great stories about, about racing in the motor city I and mean, you know over the 30 years it's funny i've talked about this before too one of the things is like uh you can go back and find some of Ayrton Senna's qual how he was like what almost a second when he would just take off and cover everybody but he wouldn't win the race mechanical issues or whatever you know things would come up like that and you guys and you you seem to really like this course in belle isle don't you yeah, it's. Uh, I, I came from uh, European style racing, so we don't have ovals. We just do road and street. Um, and I love. I don't know why, but I'm my drive suits um, street course. So I love Belle Isle. It's a mix between like a park and um, a street circuit. But obviously, it is a street circuit. You've got no runoff. It's solid concrete walls. So you've got to back yourself. You've got to. I always say you've got to be friendly with the back. huge amount of points because it's a double header so um it's uh it's one which drivers really push for i, I want to ask i was thinking about this when you guys um the setup of the car when you guys are, 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 are with the indy cars 
on a road course like Belle Isle, where you've got a lot of bumps and some of the, you know, the, the transitions and stuff, do you want a softer setup? I know you lose some speed maybe, or, or you know, when you start getting that, that, the vibe, or do you want a, a stiffer car to drive around the track? Um, it, it, some teams approach it in a different way, a soft car, but then you need a stiff, uh, third spring, which supports the car from like decking out and touching too hard because if the car's just overall soft it will just you know keep hitting the floor and if you're hitting the floor you're dragging and that's just creating a lot of friction and slowing you down so it's like a fine line that motorsport is all millimeter changes with certain parts of the car makes a huge difference so sometimes you can get a little bit lost um, but you're actually only a few millimeters away from having the perfect setup so we used to talk about like maybe some of the older the 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 previous body design you know um, there was always talk to like w- what came off the trailer is what you're going to run with. It feels like now you guys have more of an opportunity to dial these cars in. Absolutely. The cars are closer than ever. Everyone's got the same aero kit now. There's not like the Honda and the Chevrolet aero right. kit. Everyone's got the same thing now. So it's actually closer than ever. But this, there's still quite a lot of stuff we can change. So there's, there is a big difference between certain teams and setup. Um, but again, we're all within like a second of each other in qualifying. So it's a highly, highly competitive series. And it's great for the fans to come along and watch. I love the story of Carlin Motorsports. I love that, that you guys are here. I think it's so cool. It's so cool. It's a compliment to the series and to you guys as well to do this, to come over here. Because, I mean, over in Europe, we were talking like, what, uh, FB2, right? I mean, a lot of a lot of the different series. But to be here in IndyCar, it is, uh, we take it as a compliment. We're just excited to have you here. Yeah, it's uh, it was great for us to make the step across the pond. Um, it's the biggest series that Carlin have ever raced in, but they've always succeeded in everything they've done. Right. Um, I've raced for them on and off for 10 years, and I've always had race wins and pole positions. So uh, Trevor, uh, I keep giving him a, an elbow and giving him the pressure that we've got to make that happen sooner rather than later. Um, but we're up against fantastic teams like Team Penske. Roger's been in it 50-odd years. Uh, Chip Ganassi's been in it for 25 years so we're just in our start of our second year but we're, we're, we're getting there uh, there's a lot of work to be done but uh, we've got teams like McLaren that are coming over as well this year for the Indy 500 we're pairing up with them so I think there'll be more and more teams coming across well and, and now um, IndyCar is being shown in the UK as well so right so we're yep. with the broadcast in the UK so you know you start to build that as well people at home see what you guys are doing here in the States and, and the, the racing like you said like the, the races so far this year have been fantastic I mean, a, a competitive, and you guys are just like Coda. To see you guys running a Coda was crazy. Yeah, I love uh, I love the Circuit of Americas in Austin, Texas. I love the city, Austin. It's fantastic. And the facility, I raced there first in Formula 1 in 2013 and uh, fell in love with the track. They basically took the mixture of the best corners in European or Formula 1 racing and put them into one. So it's a real roller coaster of a lap. Um, it's a long lap, um, but it's also designed to have lots of overtaking. There's long straights into tight low speed corners so um, there seemed to be a lot more overtaken than the Formula 1 race that I watched there um, and hopefully we can keep that going for many many years what was the joke in Formula 1 the overtake of the year award was the one overtake of the year whoever forgot it yeah, that was the one you would get Yeah. but your guys are a barber this week for, for uh, the Grand Prix Alabama it's always funny to me that people go oh Alabama what is it that course is crazy. The elevation changes and stuff. You have some, It looks like you have some blind turns that you're going through. Yeah, there's lots of blind, fast corners, but it's also quite a small... Um, ...for a practice session, I think, or a qualifying session. It is interesting to go back to when you guys were driving on Coda. One of the things that I noticed was um, you do it so seamlessly and so, I wouldn't say effortlessly, but it looks that way. The way you're correcting constantly. Everyone thinks it's just seamless the way you're whipping around the track. Even at Belle Isle, you can see it in in car. Everyone's like, oh, it's so easy. They just transition through one and two. Uh Uh-uh. Yeah. You guys are constantly having to work that wheel, aren't you? Yeah, if you look at the onboard, I was watching the race from Formula One in Bahrain this weekend, and their onboards are minuscule amounts of opposite lock. They're basically just turn, telling the car where they want it to go. Whereas we, we tell it where it wants to go, and it goes, no, screw you, and we have to then try and correct <laughs> it. And it's like it's a const- you're, you're battling your car every, every corner four or five times. So um, it's very physical um, because you're not just sort of just driving it you're you're really fighting the whole car the whole time so that has something to do like when you're here at Belle Isle as well especially coming after the emotional the month-long build-up with Indy and then to have two races like that the physical training that you are and you're in amazing shape and and everything that's going to be a key component here as well yeah Detroit is is probably one of the hardest races of the year because we come off from the month of May which is draining physically and mentally 
and then we come into Detroit, which is a very, it's the bumpiest track on the calendar. It's a street circuit, and we've got two qualifyings, two races. Um, it's just physically demanding. So the Monday after Detroit, the drivers are very, uh, I think we just sit on the sofa for about 12 hours watching Netflix and just chilling because, they're, yeah, they're, we're pretty drained. Yeah, I don't know if I, I can't say, Net, I'm married, I can't say Netflix and chill anymore. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Max, it's great having you in studio, bud. Thank you. And, and everything, uh, MaxChilton.com, at MaxChilton on Twitter, number 59, uh, for Carlin Motorsports. And you guys are a fantastic man. It's so much fun to watch you racing, and it's going to be great here at Belle Isle. Good luck in Alabama as well. I, I do want to ask one question. I was thinking about this. As a fan of the sport, I feel, and, and everyone here at the radio station knows, I talk about it all the time, you can feel feel this IndyCar. It's building up. People are talking about it more and more. And it's not just Fernando Alonso or, you know, it is the sport as a whole. As a driver, do you feel it as well? Absolutely. Coming to races like Detroit, where it's, we're in our 30th year of the Grand Prix this year, um, it's uh, it's amazing that we, we've been building the, the championship for so long. Um, and it's definitely on the way up. NASCAR seems to be dropping with its figures and IndyCar seems to be doing the opposite and shooting up. So it's great to be able to see it just on the way up. And, um, yeah, there's lots of famous drivers in the series. Everyone's uh, got a name for their own reasons. And, um, as I said, you can never predict who's going to win. You might be last one weekend and win the next. I still say Sebastian Bourdais should be penalized a second for how bright that car is. That's yeah. just me. Yeah. yeah, I have to wear my sunglasses when I'm behind say, it. Yeah. <laughs> the bright shades there. All right, IndyCar at Silverstone. We should do that, right? I'd love to. It um, would work on that track, wouldn't it? I mean, I know you got a lot of fast corners and stuff, but I would think that'd be even more challenging for you guys. Yeah, I think we've got better circuits than Silverstone, though, for an IndyCar. I think um, something like Brands Hatch, um, Ooh. which I think Ch Champ Car, I remember watching Champ Car there, Paul Tracy and Bourdais, I think 2002-ish. That would be a great track. Um, but I'd love to take one of these around Spa. It's my favorite track in the world. So I'd love Isn't to go it there. funny? It, it, and Meryl's here from the Grand Prix. Every driver, when we when we throw that out, that's the track. That's yeah. the one, right? It's the holy grail of motorsport. Is it? Yeah. Okay. What about Bathurst? I've never done it. That's that looks pretty sensational. But it's sort of all one. It's all in one section, and then it's just long straights. The Spa is just a non-stop sequence of. I just undulating think you guys coming off a mountain when you go under fog at Bathurst. How long that one straightaway is? Yeah. It doesn't look real. It's like something like someone from Gran Turismo said, let's make a track, yeah. and we'll wrap it around a mountain. But Spa's the one for you. Spa's the one for me. Okay. All right. Well, we can work on that. You know, I, I don't know what I can do to help, but anyway, yeah, it's fantastic. Max, thank you so much. We'll see you here in Detroit. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for watching, too, as well.